Hello everyone, my name is Jane Simpkiss and I'm the Curator of Fine Art at Leamington Spa Art Gallery and Museum. With this month's Curator's Choice video, I'm going to be discussing one of the most recent acquisitions to the gallery, which is a painting of the Annunciation by Margaret Gere. We acquired this work during the first lockdown and finally managed to get it up on the wall before the second lockdown commenced. I hope we'll be able to welcome you back to the gallery soon to see it yourselves, but for now, perhaps this video will give you a good understanding of the significance of the work and the artist who created it. So what are we looking at exactly? Well, this is a painting, as I said, by Margaret Gere. It's entitled Copy of the Annunciation by Filippo Lippi, and it was made in around 1906. The painting depicts the Virgin Mary holding out her hand, palm first, and in the other hand clutching a book. Mary is wearing a pink tunic with a blue headscarf and robe, and pink and blue are colours traditionally associated with the Virgin Mary in art. Blue symbolising her purity and pink her motherhood. And a bright gold halo encircles her head, indicating Mary's saintly status. And if you look right in the corner, you can see a dove as well. Now this work has been copied from a small section of a painting of the Annunciation by 15th century Italian artist Filippo Lippi, which is now in the Doria Pamphili Gallery in Rome. The Annunciation, which is depicted here, is the moment in the Bible when the angel Gabriel appears to Mary to tell her that she is pregnant with the Christ child. And it's thought that Lippi's scene depicts the moment when Mary questions the angel's news, she raises up her hand to him and she asks, how can you possibly be with child, considering the fact that she is a virgin? Now, if we look at the top of Lippi's work, we can see something quite unusual, which is a pair of hands appearing to come through the ceiling and releasing a dove towards the Virgin Mary. Now, this, uh, these are actually the hands of God, and he's sending down a dove, which symbolizes the Holy Ghost with whom Mary has conceived the child. Now, if we compare the work side by side, we can see that Gear has chosen to copy only one part of Lippi's larger painting. She's not depicted perhaps some of the most important aspects of an Annunciation scene, so the angel Gabriel is completely missing. She's also not depicted the central vase of lilies in Lippi's painting, which indicate the Virgin Mary's purity. In fact, when viewed on its own, it's only really Gear's inclusion of the dove, which she squeezed into the side of her painting, that indicates that her work depicts the Annunciation. It feels like Gear is more interested in capturing the character of the Virgin than depicting the full story of the Annunciation. And in fact, when we compare them side by side, we can again see that this is an exact copy because Gear has only painted the top part of the Madonna, the top two thirds of her. Uh, whereas Lippi paints um, her full uh, body, including her foot, down at the bottom. So in order to balance the composition, Gears actually changed the position of the Madonna's hands as well. So the hand holding the book is now in front of her chest instead of resting at her hip. So now that we've talked about this painting, I think it's probably important now that we talk about who Margaret Gear was and why she might be interested in copying this type of work. So Margaret Gear was born in Leamington Spa in 1878. And after attending Leamington High School and Dame School in Warwick, she began her artistic training under her half-brother, Charles March Gear, at the Birmingham Municipal School of Art. Margaret would later train at the Slade School of Art in London. It was in Birmingham that Margaret became associated with the Birmingham group of artist craftsmen, which consisted of her, her sister Edith, Edith's future husband Henry Payne, and their half brother Charles March Gear, along with another of uh, a number of other students and teachers from Birmingham Art School. In this painting, the Tennis Party, which is at the Wilson Art Gallery in Cheltenham and which was painted around 1900, we can actually see Margaret Gear, and she's the one who is on the left-hand side at the back, uh, holding the tennis racket and, and playing tennis. And it's thought that she's playing tennis in Leamington with her sister and her future brother-in-law. Now, Margaret's early work was highly influenced by the ideas of the Birmingham group of artist craftsmen. 
Like a number of other artists in Britain, uh, this group was influenced by the legacy of the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood, which had been established in Britain in the mid 19th century. This movement promoted a return to the bright colours, rich detail and complex compositions of medieval and early Renaissance art, particularly Italian art. They wanted to move away from art which they saw as championing style over subject matter. Their work had a romantic quality and they often painted subjects from the Bible or British folklore. So with this in mind, it's no wonder that Filippo Lippi's work um, really caught Margaret Gere's attention. He was one of the most famous early Renaissance Italian painters. And Gere's work emphasises the bright colours of Lippi's painting and the soft natural rendering of the Madonna's face. However, as we've already seen, um, her depiction of Mary doesn't mirror exactly Lippi's painting. And if we look at the halo around Mary's head, we can see that it doesn't have any of the shading that you can see in Lippi's work. And this gives it a much more graphic quality, almost like an illustration, um, which is not a surprise because illustration and printmaking were really going through a golden age in the 19th century with the rise of movements such as the arts and crafts movement with William Morris and the aesthetic movement. And these ideas were also followed by the Birmingham art group and were very much in the keeping with the period in which Gear was working. Another interesting fact is that like Italian masters and others influenced by pre-Raphaelitism, uh, Gear often worked in egg tempera, and that's the medium that she used to create this work um, that we've now got in the gallery. Um, and so egg tempera is made by combining egg yolks and powdered coloured pigments, which creates a fast drying and vibrantly coloured paint. So how would Margaret have seen a painting like this to even uh, copy it? Well, whilst prints of famous masterpieces would have been available for Margaret to look at, it seems likely that she saw this work in the flesh. Um, following through on the enthusiasm for Italian painting in the 19th century, many artists, including Margaret, travelled to Italy to study and sketch. And Margaret and her brother travelled to Italy in 1900 and stayed there for some time. And it's likely that on this trip, she saw Lippi's Annunciation, um, and then painted this work in around 1906 after returning to England. Now, this is not the only copy that Margaret made during her career, not the only Italian copy she made. In 1901, while she was on the same trip in Italy, she also produced a copy of the back panels of the celebrated The Duke and Duchess of Urbino, Federico de Montefeltro and Battista Sforza by Piero della Francesca, which showed the Duke and Duchess in triumph. Now, although the original um, is actually oil and panel, Gia made her copy in tempera, like she did um, with the Annunciation. And we can see here, Margaret's uh, copy on the left, it's got that graphic illustrative style of hers. And then we've got Piero Della Francesca's, uh, the one that she uh, copied on the right. So, um, but she didn't only paint copies, Margaret Gia. It's important to, to uh, highlight the fact that she actually had a very wide-ranging um, oeuvre and she painted uh, a number of different types of painting um, during her life. Um, it's thought that um, she actually really painted more for pleasure than to make a living and that might uh, be the reason behind her interest in these copies. Um, but she really did extend her output beyond copies um, and many of her works were very positively received. So in keeping with um, her influences that we've already talked about, a large part of her output was religious paintings. So examples of her religious works can be found in the Tate and in the Wilson at Cheltenham Museum Art Gallery. Um, so for example, I've, I've chosen two um, of these works here. And both of these subjects, which depict Noah's Ark and Pharaoh's Dream, are taken from Old uh, Testament stories in the Bible. And they really share the illustrative qualities of Gia's enunciation and demonstrate uh, Gia's interest in symbolism and bright colour and storytelling that she shared with the Birmingham group of artist craftsmen. Gia also produced a number of portraits and flowers paintings, um, the latter of which were praised by her friend, the renowned novelist Virginia Woolf. Um, throughout her career, Margaret showed her works in Birmingham and in London, as well as um, 
uh, being a member of the New English Art Club and the Royal Society of um, Artists in Birmingham. After moving to Gloucestershire with her brother, she became an early member of the Cotswolds Group and exhibited with the Cheltenham Arts Group. Their Cotswold home became a popular visiting location for numerous important cultural figures of the day, such as Sir Stanley Spencer, Vanessa Bell, Virginia Woolf, George Bernard Shaw and John Betjeman. But despite moving in these cultural circles, recognition of Margaret Gere's importance as an artist diminished in the 20th century. Uh, this is likely in part uh, to pre raphaelitism and the arts and crafts movement falling out of fashion, particularly after the First World War, in the wake of the popularity of modern art movements such as Impressionism and Post-Impressionism. Interest in Margaret Gere and the later pre raphaelite artists, however, um, is currently undergoing a revival and we hope to introduce a new audience to Gere and her work through this acquisition at Leamington. Now, once you've seen this work in Leamington, you can go on to see a number of other works by Gear at the Wilson Gallery in Cheltenham and Manchester Art Gallery, Royal Holloway and the Tate. And although the gallery is currently closed, you can continue to explore our collection online via the Art UK website, Windows on Warwickshire and through other Curator's Choice videos, which we upload to YouTube. I really hope you've enjoyed watching this talk and I really look forward to welcoming you back to the gallery soon. Thanks so much.